Hello. I am the writer and director of the film, Kirtan Singh. I'm here today to invite you on the director's commentary of the film, just so I can explain the little things that I did here and there. Starting off, we have the introduction to the interrogator and his partner, female partner. I never thought of a name for her. Don't know why, I just didn't think of it. I originally wanted to start this off with a short fight scene between the interrogator and Thane, but due to restrictions in regards to what I can do in the time I had, I was unable to. So I just started off with an inter um, interrogator already capturing Thane, and Thane being in his car as they drive off to find a safe place to hide. So now as we have interrogator break into the random people's houses, I just want to make sure people know that this is someone else's house. Um, and actually, this is the three three times three first of the three times that you see that same door used in the film because I recorded this all at my friend's Jaja's house, and I needed to figure out three ways by which I could make that one door seem different. So it seems like a different house. So the first way was by just to have the bottom of the door, so you can't really see many of the features. Now back up to what's happening now, we see the interrogator killing everyone. You're meant to be seeing him kill the victim, uh, the residents of the house. And this shows him off as a killer. Someone who doesn't really care, just comes in, does whatever he needs to. And the way that he grabbed the knife earlier when he first picked it up, is meant to show his love for it, how he's like, this is a really awesome knife, this is amazing, I love it. And then we go in to see him get into character which is leading to his personality traits where he takes up a personality of someone else whenever he interrogates or does something like that. Now of course we go to Sabah meeting Thane. This is the second time which I used that same door. The way I made the door look different this time was by having it being blocked by the gates, I guess in a way, of the wooden gates, which make it seem like a different location. Because it's like, that wasn't there earlier, but it's here now. And I originally had a middle scene here which showed Sabah get the tissue, the medicine, all that kind of stuff. I really liked it, but it seemed out of place. So I thought, keep it moving, have this happen. I actually had to get um, Gujarat, the actor who plays Sabah, to say these lines again. Because when he said it the first time, I'm pretty sure he said it without the accent. I can't remember exactly what. So, But then it did a pretty good job, I think, of editing it together. Um, so here I wanted to make sure you could really tell that Sabah was the master because he's calm, collected, and he's looking out for Thane, who's the apprentice. But then you can also tell that Thane has little to no respect. Well, he has respect, but not much respect for Sabah, which can signal to maybe his past, maybe what happened to him before he became Thane, um, Sabah's apprentice. You can feel that by the way he says shit and all that kind of stuff, the way he just talks to Sabah. So now we go back to the past, of course. Black and white is the past, color is the present. We have here the interrogator playing with the knife, showing him contemplate on what to do with the knife, how special it is, which is showing him get into character. Originally I had him have a music player as well, a radio of some sort, to carry with him here. And then it was going to be kind of like a Tarantino style part. This whole interrogation I tried to make what was inspired by Tarantino. Um, so then that was going to make him seem more like a guy created by his personality, whatever he has around him. Um, so that music was kind of there. With this short part in particular, I liked it because it shows how dirty and mucky the water is. And in the background as well, you can see the jackal, which Thane later grabs on his way out. So originally there was going to be music here playing, but I thought it, it, this creates a little more tension by having it just the natural sounds. And of course we go to the interrogation here. Which I love the lighting in this scene. Because it just shows Thane like that. Then you have me in the background. I played the interrogator, sorry. One thing I don't like here, I accidentally had the script laid out there. I should have hidden it better. But it doesn't look that bad. And as you can tell here, I turned on the radio. Which, of course, I took that scene out earlier. But... I still had that part here. Thankfully, Dujar, the actor who plays Thane, was happy to have the water, well, not happy to, but 
he allowed me to throw the actual water on his face, which was quite lucky because it would have been quite tedious process trying to make that look realistic without having actually done it. So I'm thankful for that. And here you can first time, well not the first time, but one of the, you hear an interrogator try to intimidate thing, but he doesn't look intimidated. Look at the way the lighting was on his face. It really looks him, makes him look tough. His eyes are shadowed and there's barely any light on him. It's really good. And this is where we see the interrogator's personality really kick in, like his character, which he gets into. He makes up a story about the knife he just recently picked up, calls it Silent Sally, makes up a whole backstory behind her, all in an attempt to scare Thane. And when he sees that Thane is not really interested, he tries to get more into that by actually touching him in a way. And for my voice here, I tried to go for a little bit like David from The Last of Us video game, and also kind of the Joker. And I had my hair out compared to all the other characters, because it made me look more villainy. I wanted to get quite violent, but I am limited and I don't want to hurt my friends either, so those are a lot of restrictions that limit me and stop me from going there. And all this here, how about I start with your eyes, all these are just tactics the interrogator used to scare his victims, essentially. All made up stories. Some of them may be true, you don't know which ones are true. And in this, I wish I was a little more startled when I heard, I found we found Sabah. Sabah, it was meant to be surprised that, a surprise that I, we found him so quickly. But I didn't really play that out as well as I hoped, but it looks fine still for what it is. And was I tried not to bleed too much, I was meant to have cut his face, but I kind of just let that slide later on when I made, I actually applied some glue and the other stuff to Jujar's face to make him look like he had a cut, but later on I dismiss, dismissed it by not focusing on it as much as I planned. And here I truly went for a Tarantino style breakout with the breakout music jazzy kind of style and then having Thane break out. See the restrictions on his hands I wanted to make it look better than that with a rope but I've realized that using an actual rope may take quite a while to cut through and then if I don't get it the first time I'll be wasting their own rope Jujar's rope so I don't want to do that and then with these this scene here actually showing the partner meant to show her as more of a techie person because she has all these computers here and what I love the most is that you can see all these children childish stuff in the background but periodic tables stuff you learn in science class just further adds to the fact that this is some resident's house this isn't their hideout they killed people to get in here and then looking at the garage itself it has a whole lot of basic gym stuff garden stuff a whole lot of things like that you can even hear the fridge in the background which is quite impressive, I think, because it really makes it seem more like a house. So of course, yeah, Thane waits for the interrogator to come back in, so he knows that the interrogator is out of his way. So that way, if he ran out while the interrogator was out, he could have run to the door and then bam, the interrogator was there. So then it led to this part, he grabs a jacket because Jijai would have had to fight in the cold and it would have been better if he didn't, so didn't want to get him sick or anything. So we made him wear a jacket, and then we have the fight scene begin. Try to do a shaky camera. We used real swords for this, serious times, actual swords. And we actually did proper choreography for this, you can tell. And we made him run. We actually had two versions of the film. One where we do this, the swords clash. And if you listen, that sound there of the sword sliding, that is the actual sound of the two swords. I didn't add that in after. That is the sounds our two swords made when they were sliding. And then I left that in there. So the second version of the fight I had made had a neck break in it. So Jajar runs into hiding, Thane runs into the woods. Then when I come up there, he sneaks in from behind and snacks my neck. That was actually a pretty good version, but it made the death seem unsatisfactory. 
and, and way too quick as well like the, it's fighting goes for 48 seconds but that just made it feel like it was like that really really quick so then here i had thane walk out jaja walk out acting injured as if he's hurt takes off the mask showing you how he's done with this he's got involved in this and he wants to just lose his way like leave it so i had this part here because the mask actually blew in the wind and my camera moved <laughs> 